So welcome back everybody. We continue tonight the on the fifty second chapter on page one forty six in the original text. You can see in the corresponding English text, which actually comes up on this very site in the original site. Again, as we mentioned for the newcomers, TanyaOnline.com, TanyaOnline one word dot com, and the the uh, English text. Hebrew and English text uh, come up on a separate scroll bar as such, it's easy to follow. Also the easy access to all the previous classes which come up in the same manner. Um, so therefore, even this past, past class, which we are continuing now with this very idea, this very chapter is a continuation of the last class, you can just see it as a click away. So as we try, at least we make an attempt every week, to try to minimize the entry into the class. There's an urge because it's a uh, it's after a week of study to try to recap, but together with briefly recapping, I really ask um, that we give there's an appreciation not 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 to, and to do this solely in brief, just because it's really a click away. Just back to the last class, you can see. The message, and generally the message of Pedic Nun Beis. I believe this is the third class of Pedic Nun Beis, of the 56th chapter, uh, if, I, if I, I believe so. But we did mention that the, there is a one message, a one continuation, a continuum from the 51st to the 52nd, and ultimately the 53rd, which is the culmination of the Lukuti Amorim, the central part of the entire Sefer Atanya. Uh, the magnum opus of the Alter Rebbe, definitely the Lukuti Amorim. Um, as we know, the Tanya there is the five Chalokim, Lukuti Amorim, Sharich and Ramon, Igenes HaTshuva, Igenes HaKedish, and then Kuntiyas Achrin. Lukuti Amorim, we say Tanya is usually Lukuti Amorim, and um, primarily, I'd say primarily Lukuti Amorim, but this Alter Rebbe concludes the entire Lukuti Amorim, Tanya, um, this part of Tanya, that is, and as we mentioned, that this is a unique message. Al Trebi clearly, it's 51st, 52nd, 53rd, are one message to which Al Trebi chose to conclude the entire period. We mentioned also that we learn it in best such as uh, Al Trebi brings the message home over here towards the very end of Pedic Ben Gimel. We can appreciate why this would be the formal choice or the choice of the Al Trebi for the formal culmination of the Sefer. But right now, we're in the middle of Pedic. Noon Bays, the 52nd. We're holding again page 146. If you want to follow on the, on the original text, there'll be Slapchus just a bit over the over the half of the page. The line starts with Achiv, and we're holding Slapchus. So to get straight, get straight into it, the Tereb uh, brings from that marshal that the Nefesh of the person, right? There was a long elaboration of the mushal, of the example, the metaphor, and with this he comes to the message, to the nimshal. So he says that the nefesh enters, in order the nefesh, which should be mahavim machayim mikayim, the body, it enters first in the nerve system in the brain, which we know is the nerve system, and then from there it um, disseminates, so to say, its energy based on the particular type of limb, particular type of function, if it's the eye to see, the ear, the ear to hear, foot to walk and so on and so forth and but before that it has no shaykhas, there's no connection nor to brain, nor to heart nor to fu- to any function to seeing, to he- hearing and so on it's just only when it enters then this whole process begins again that, uh, this is one part of the mashal which up to the nimshal was there's the evish to Hashem that always forms himself by himself it's beyond connecting connection to any level of elements maybe the higher, the, the hidden Kimosh, the way he's hidden from the Almadis Gali, so he's hidden from Almadis Gali in the same exact fashion. We brought this, which Al-Tarebbe says in Pedic, Memches, the true infinity is, it's, it's not, so to say, touched by anything grand. It's removed from the grand like it's removed from the small, in the exact same manner, because if it's excited the grand, it's truly not really, it's truly not infinite. And the same idea, they would say Hashem was there for himself, by himself, he is sasum kamesh, he's sasum, he's distant, he's concealed, uh, he's hidden from the revealed worlds, is exactly the same as hidden from the almin steam in the hidden worlds. Conversely, he says, kamesh matu sham, kach matu kan. You mentioned that we emphasize also the Altarebbe kind of turning it around. 
We're saying this very brief and with, and with tidbits so you can't expect to understand the grander picture. Perhaps if you're following, if you were there in the last few weeks or generally you're following this class, it you, you can appreciate why this helps over here and you can appreciate even this, these, uh, this brevity contributing to the continuation of this very chapter where we're holding. And the Rebbe goes on, he says, so to Lamaila, the other part, when Hashem dis- decides to become the emanator, the creator, he enters, just like the nefesh enters first in the brain system and then into the brain, to the nerve system, and then it gives off the highest to the entire body. So to Hashem, when he becomes the emanator, the creator, and so on, he enters first in the Kedesh HaKadoshim, or rather, he enters the Chabad of every Eilam, the Chochmah Bin Adas, the, the, which is, he calls it the Kedesh HaKadoshim, the holy shrine of the Eilam. And he says, Chochmah Bin Adas, that's the source of Teira, that is the Teira, Teira Mitzvah, that's the Chochmah of Nasri, that is the Baruch Hu. And that becomes the lavush for the reason we said why is Teira the lavush, because it has that duality, it's, it's connected to on high and very much on high, yet it manifests in Varim Gashmim, which is a significant majority of the Teiras, had Nigla the way we know it. And then it goes on from every every single Eilam, he answers the Bria, he goes through the Kedish Kadashim Bria, which is the Chach Minadasa Bria. And what happens then? And then eventually becomes the creator of everything associated with Bria. And then he says, and then so too in Yitzira, and that's what we're holding. But one of the things he added there, he says, this is where we have the Talmud Shalafonenu. Because we not going to take more time to explain this, how the Yud Kivovke of Shemavaya, of uh, is uh, the, the Yud Kivovke, which is the way it's represented in Atzilus, is Chochman, and the Bin and the Das, and the six Midas, and then the Malchus, each one comes into another Eilam Yud, which is Atzilus, Yud is Chochma, which is the Bittel, the total, absolute Bittel, of is personified in Eilam Atzilus, is represented in, this is what Atzilus is all about, Lo Yigur Chara, and then you have the, the Bina Das, the intellect of Yochel of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Nes, Bina, it's Nes in, Yitz, in Brio, as the Lashon is in Kabbalah, it enters into Brio, becomes the spirit of Eilam Brio, and he says from there comes the Talmud Shilofanei, the whole point of Talmud is the Svara, the Seichel, the, the, uh, the intellectual appreciation of why the Halacha like this and why the Halacha like that, as opposed to Mishnah. Mishnah is just, this is it. And again, the arguments of the Mishnah of the different Tanoim, and I made Tanoim, that is, um, which, as we know, that it wasn't just they decided to argue about certain ideas. It comes from where the Sherish and Neshama, there's all their root of their Neshama, which is from Chesed, from Gvura. Therefore, uh, in other words, Chesed would mean uh, the, the, as an example, which was we gave last week, Beis Hillel Beshamai, and other times as well. Beis Hillel Beshamai, Beis Hillel was Mekel because the Neshama, the Sherish and Neshama, the source of Beis Hillel Neshama was from Chesed. So he found the opportunities to be makel, meaning to say that this could be elevated, this could be sublimated, it doesn't mean it have to be negated and pushed away. They said they were more machmi, they were more strict and stringent because this has no chance to be elevated and therefore it should be pushed away, which tells us clearly that halachas are associated with the midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And not only the midas of chesed, gvura, bechesed, gvura, tiferes, netzach, and yisei, malchus, which are the bases of the of the of the piske dinim, which we find primarily in the Mishnah. If it's chayiv, if it's potter, if it's mutter, if it's asr, it's kosher, it's posel, it's tome, it's tahir, as an, as an example. In other words, if it's permissible, if it's prohibited, if it's kosher or non-kosher, and um, uh, disqualified, if one's obligated or one is exempt, and then it doesn't mention over here that something's pure or impure. This stems from the piske, this, the, these piske dinim stem from the midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, without explanation, because that's the basis, the structure of the Mishnah. As opposed to the Gemara is already the, the understanding of these piske dinim, which is again associated with the Hashem's intellect, which is mekanen of Ebriya, and that's why in Fembriya we have the Talmud Shalafonin, as opposed to the Mishnah, is associated with Yitzira, again, Hashem's Midas, right? The Yud and Atzilus, the, the Bina and the Das, intellect in Briya, Nes in Briya, and then the Midas of Hashem, of Atzilus, Nes, and associated with, and connect to 
Olam Hayitzira, and therefore we the Mishnah Shalafaneinu comes from Olam Hayitzira because that's where you have the Shisvira Mekanenam BiYitzira, the Lashon that the six Sviras nest in Yitzira, and there we have the Mishnah, which is the Piski Dinim coming. Coming and is the spirit of all these halapis ki which are again the midas of a kodesh baruch and this is what we're holding. Or we slap just machas that seals machas the bria, starting from the original message, that it enters into the kodesh hakodashim of bria, which is the chachma bina daas bria. Remember the nefesh coming into the system of the body it goes through the it starts primarily and enters the brain and the nerve system and then it becomes manifest throughout the entire body. But as we mentioned a few times that by the Look how too much time I'm too much. Look how much time I'm giving for this. I've mentioned a few times that the the uh, by the man in the metaphor, there's one one system, one man, one nefesh creating the man. When it comes to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, every olam is a structure on its own, and therefore, when it comes into the next olam, the whole process begins again. It goes to the Chacham Binadas of that olam again, as he calls it, the Kedush Hakadoshim of that olam, and then it becomes manifest in that very olam and accomplishes and creates everything of that Eilam. We mentioned also usually Malchus would be the creator of the and the energy of the subsequent Eilam, but in this case he says even that very Eilam, all this what happens is through the Malchus of that Eilam, but again it begins through the energy entering the Chacham Bin Adas and then into Malchus, which then establishes all this associated with that particular Eilam, in this case Eilam Ayitzira. And then he goes on, Umisham Ha Mishnah the Mishnah which we know it again as primarily Piske Dinim. This is Mutter, Osir, Kosher, Posel, Chayev, Potter, and so on and so forth. And this is what we're holding, Mislapshas, Machas Datsil, Machas de Brio. When there is the Hislapshas, the investment of Machas Datsilus, or Machas de Brio, um, yeah. We, so we, we concluded last week the Islam shows the investment of Machaz Atzils and Machaz de Brio, rather into the Ilma Brio. But now he's saying into the world of Yitzira. So it goes, starts with Machaz Atzils and Machaz de Brio. And then eventually, Misla Beshes, Behechel, Kochi Kochim, the Yitzira. Why Machaz de Brio? Because again, that's the way it evolved. It came from Machaz Atzils into the world of Brio. And then in the Machaz of Brio, which created all this associated with Ilam. Habriya, and then from the Malchus de Bria, it goes on into the world of Yitzira. But how does it go in the world of Yitzira? Mislabeshes beichel kotchi kotchim de Yitzira, which is the Chacham Binadas of Yitzira. Shehu Chabad de Yitzira, which is the Chacham Binadas de Yitzira for that very reason. Besalpshus from the Malchus de Yitzira when it enters into the Malchus de Yitzira, nights through haruchis v'amelochim should be Yitzira. What was created is the spirits, which is again associated with the neshamis. Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama, Chai Yechida. And we know the Ruach dimension of the Neshama that's associated with Elma Yitzira. Right? Nefesh and Asiya, Ruach and Yitzira. And then Neshama and Bria, and so on and so forth. So the Ruach's dimension of the Neshama, we mentioned in the past also, what does it mean that the Neshama, Chamisha Shemus Nikrula, that the Neshama has five names? It's not just a name, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a title for a particular expression of neshama in its overall submission to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a nefesh type of submission, a nefesh type of execution in Avedus Hashem, particular type of execution in, uh, uh, execution of a particular type of Avedus Hashem, and so to ne- Ruach, and then nefesh, and uh, neshama rather than Chai Yechida, which is a more amakivtik part of the neshama. We explained in the past how that contributes to the what, what the dimension of Abed Hashem is represented by each one of these five names. But the Ruach, the mention of the Nisham, is associated with El Mabriya. So what is created, the Ruchis of El Mabriya, the Mamaloch, I'm sorry, of Yitzira, that is. So about the Ruchis of El Mabriya, the Mamaloch, and Shabit Yitzira, the angels of Yitzira. And then he goes on, we got Nisham, a Mishnah, the Shalafanenu. And from there, it's the Mishnah which we know it. Uh, which is the, the, this, which the, the mission that we study. And again, I say we study. If you recall, last week Dr. Rebbe pointed out when it came to the Talmud Shulfanenu, he associated with the Elam Abriya, and the Rebbe asks, well, how could we say Teda with the Elam Abriya? Teda is Chachma of Akadosh Baruch Hu. He says when it becomes Talmud Shulfanenu, it becomes Talmud Shulfanenu already associated with us. So there, at that point, it is. Um, 
it, it, it really carries more the energy and associated with the energy of Elam Abriyo. And so too, when it comes to, to Yitzira, the Mishnah, Shalafoneinu, even though the Mishnah is Teda, and every part of Teda is associated with Chachmasi Ritzayin Shalakodesh Baruch but nonetheless, the Mishnah, Shalafoneinu, is associated in the spirit of Olam HaYitzira, associated and stems from the spirit of Olam HaYitzira, which is Allah's Psukis, which is again Piski Allah's, and Yimshach is Gamkim Nechabat Shalayit Zabaruch it certainly comes from the Chochem Bin Adas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu because Teir is Chochmaschem or Binaschem or Bein Leini Kol Amim, like it says in Dvarim, Chumish Dvarim, that Teir is your wisdom and your knowledge and the reason why Teir is called Chochma Bina because it stems from the Chochma Bina Das of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what Teir is. Teir is the Chochma Bina Das of the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as is the Lashem Mechabad of Ein Sab Baruch Hu, the way it becomes manifest in Eil Matzil, the way it expresses itself in Eil Matzil, which is again Eil Matzil, Lo Yigur Charat, all pure, all divine, and no Yeshes, not even a subtle expression of Yeshes. But nonetheless, when it comes into Eil Matzil, the Chabad of the t- dimension of Teira, which this is Teira is all about, Kaviyachal is, so to say, camouflaged. It's it's not it's eclipsed with the energy of Elam HaYitzira, which is about the Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and therefore it's precisely the Mishnah, not the Talmud, because the Mishnah is about Piskei Dinim, which is associated with the Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As he goes on, the Chabad Shem Taim HaAlochis, the Chach Minadas, which are the reasons for the Allah, which is manifest in Elam HaBriya, because in Elam HaBriya have the Chach Minadas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Heim Luboshem Ugnuzim, they're invested and clothed, clothed means they kind of, they're covered up, with a garment of the spirit of Elam HaYitzira, Ugnuzim, and they're hidden, the Gufei HaLochis, in the body of the HaLochis. And that's what he says, it, we don't negate the fact that every part of Teir is assessed with the Chachmas and Binasi, V'day Teshel HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Chabad of the Ein Sab Baruch Hu, but in Elam HaBriya, where the Bina Das of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is in Nes, which in Elam HaBriya, again, the, the, the Bina Das, the intellect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kam Yochul, is manifest in the Mabriya, so there you have the Talmud Shilofanein, which is the reasoning for the Allahs. That is what stands overt, as opposed to in Elam HaYitzira, the Chabad is Melubosh, it's invested, it means that there's a Malbush covering it, eclipsing over, so to say, the Chabad dimension of these, this very part of Teiru Gnuzim, and they're hinted in the body of the Halachas, which are the Piskidinim himself. You look in the Mishnah, it's Pater, Kosher, Asur, Pasal, Mm, chayiv and Potter, or Chayiv Potter, uh, Osir Kosher, uh, a Mutter Osir, a Kosher and Possel, or Tommy and Tahir. These are the body of the Halachas. The Levibchin is Gilui, not that you're able to appreciate the reasoning behind the Halachas, because of the six meters of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, Mekanan on Nes and El Mayitzira. The Gufi Halacha is Shebchen is Gilehin and Ha'oris Mikdais of Shalit Sabarucha, the body of this Halacha is the Piskidim of the Halacha is. This is, the, this is what stands manifest in El Mayitziro, and this is the Ha'ora, the ray of the Midais of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Midas of the infinite light, infinity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Bechin is Gili, as they stand in their full expression and their full state of manifestation. And again, as we commission Zbarad HaLashem HaTikunim, like he brings, like we mentioned before, in the name of the Tikunim, which is again a part of Zayar, the Shisvira Mekan and Be'itzira, that the six spheres of HaKadosh Baruch Hu nest in Elam HaYitzira, Shehim Derech Chal Shnei even though that when you say six midas, it's six distinct midas, chesed, gvura, tiferes, netzach, you say malchus. But nonetheless, generally, they could be summed up, summed up and encapsulated in more the structure of yamin, usmail, and emtza, to the right, and, or he says, no, he speaks he speaks about the two kavan, rather. All the six midas, midas could, are, are usually associated with the kav of yamin, of the right, or the kav, the line, of smile, usually it's gvura and um, it's, a, it's a chesed, netzach, um, or ches, chesed and netzach have a connection to each other, gvura and hoid have a connection to each other, and so on, the other two mitis. So what is the point of saying this, that it's usually uh, grouped and 
um, represented by a Yemeni and Smell, the right and the left, because he wants to uh, uh, he wants to tell us over here that if you look at the piske dinim of the halachas, he wants to relate. He wants to al wants to explain over here because if you look in the piske dinim of these halachas, even though there is it's heter iser kosher pasul chayiv potur, but if you look straight through the the idea of something being mutter or if you focus in, rather, on something being mutter and osur, what do you see over here? You see something more associated with yimin, and osur would be associated with smile, like we explained in the beginning of this very class, and quite a few times, that when you say something is mutter, meaning to say that you can go ahead and engage with it, you can deal with it, and how does a person deal with any matter of el mazeh? He knows he's dealing with it just to elevate it, to refine it, to sublimate it. That means you can, there's the opportunity to deal with it, to do something about it. As opposed to this, what Tadis says, do not do and stay away from doing, you ought to push it away. You have to negate it, which is usually the word asur. So you see the idea of gvura, discipline, not engaging, which is associated with chesed, but rather removing, distancing, which is associated with gvura. And so too, when you look at kosher and you look at pasul, you look at Chayot, you look at Potter, you see the, the, the common Midas, or the when you want to look at, to find the Piskedinim and the Midas, you kind of group all the Midas together and you say, there is, of all these six Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there is the Yimin, the right, and the left. And from this stem, everything which is associated with Kula, Kosher, Potter, is associated with Chesed, why is he exempt? Because there's a kind of energy which is focusing on that particular scenario which says he is exempt, he's okay. That's a, a ray of chesed. And when he says chiyuv, it's not okay, he's culpable. That comes from gvura. Again, you see the yaminu smile. So true, is, is, there's no question that all these piskidim are associated with all the midas, and you can find them, it's written in a number of places. What is this, what peace psak din has to do, which Allah has to do with netzach or hoid or yesaid, and so on and so forth. But generally, you group all the midas together, you find that the certain midas are associated with yamin, the certain midas are associated with, associated with smile, and that you see clearly, overtly, in all the piskei dinim, as we just went through the het and iser. And so do you say chiyuv and potter, so to kosher and posel. It's kosher, it's associated with yamin, the right side which is chesed, which is kulu, which is leniency. Posel is gvuro. So this is the shnei kavim, the two kavim of yamin and smel, lahokel misitir the chesed. When it comes to leniency, that comes from the side of chesed. And again, he explains it over here, lahatir sheyuchal lalis lashem, that, that's the point of the permissibility, the energy of permissibility that says that you can engage with it because you can elevate it to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It can be elevated. It can be, and therefore it's meant to be elevated, refined, sublimated towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you say something is strict, you have to negate it, you push it away, that is associated with Gvura. So when you have the piske dinim in the Mishnah, we know that it's clearly directive, directly connected rather with Eilam HaYitzira, Umisham HaMishnah Shalafaneinu, because the Shish Svira, the six Sviras of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, nest in Eilam HaYitzira. So the, the spirit of Eilam HaYitzira is associated with the Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so this is directly connected to the clear black and white piske dinim, which come from the Mishnah, as opposed to the Gemara is more the explanation of this dinim, the Chacham Binadas, the Binadas, the intellect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is manifest in Torah, in, in Talmud, which is there to explain these very piske dinim, as opposed to the Mishnah, it's, it's truly, it is the Chacham Binadas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but nonetheless, it's Mugabosh and Mugnuzim, they're hidden in, into the body of the Halachas, which are the piske dinim of the Halachas associated with the Midas of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, generally grouped into Yom and Ismail, to the right, to the left, which is Chesed and Gvura. Is it Mutter? Could it be elevated? Or it ought to be distant? Distanced. Vakela pichochmei la adatzilas. Everything is naturally rooted in the Chochma of Atzilas itself, because that's the source of Teirah. 
U bina u das klulis bo. And the bina, the understanding and knowledge of Akash Baruch Hu is included in this chachma um yuchadis. And all in all, it's united between Sof Baruch Hu and the infinite light of Akash Baruch Hu. That's what Taita is. Ultimately, Taita is a manifestation of the infinite light of Akash Baruch Hu, which is beyond chachma. Although the Ein Sof Baruch Hu, the Ein Sof keli to the Ein Sof is chachma as bittul, as the famous expression of the Alter Rebbe in Perik Lamed Hey, the Kash Shemaiti Mimeiri. The Ha'ar Elamit Hey when I Shemaiti Mimeiri, as he says that Chochma is about the Echad of Ein Sof is the Echad of Emes, and that is Bchinu Madrig it's a Chochma. So the true Kaili, the conduit to to Ein Sof Baruch is the level of is the sphere of Chochma, Chochma, and that is the source of Teira. Teira is of Nechi Hashem Oikach. Teira is the core essence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which became manifest in the Teira Shulfanina, the Teira that we have it. Anon nafshik sovis yehov is the acronym of anechi Hashem alikecho. Anon nafshik sovis yehov is Hashem says, I put my whole self into Teira. And this is the chokhmah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rabbi Nevedas, Kulu's voice is miyachod, this is all in all included in one in the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ki besech kulu melubesh is chabah. And this is in every single level of Teira. If it's the Talmud Shulafanenu, Spirit of Elam Abriya, and the Mishnah Shalafanayim, the Gufi Allah is associated with Elam Ayitzira, because in all the Sechkul and in all Mulabosh is Chabad Atzilus are invested the Chokhm bin Adas of Atzilus, Sha'ir in Sab Baruchum Yuchud Bahem Betachas Ayichud, the infinite light of Akhach Baruchu is united with the ultimate unity with the Chokhm bin Adas of Atzilus, as we just mentioned. So to the Alter Rebbe continues the chain b'derze in the very same fashion your dashchinim in Islam shabichol kochi kochim dasio that the same energy of the shchino comes down into the lower world as we mentioned in the beginning of the court towards this class this which we mentioned the last week when it comes to the moshul there are no levels it's the nefesh coming into one body that's it. So it goes through the brain and the nerve system and then it becomes manifest in the entire body. But as we mentioned, when it comes to the ailments, each ailment is a structure on its own. So when the energy has to come and create and deal with a lower world, which is Eilamasiyah, again, it has to come into Eilamasiyah. It has to go to the Chabad of Eilamasiyah, the Chachuminadas of Eilamasiyah, which is the brain, so to say, the nerve system, if you will, of Eilamasiyah. And here he says it in in, in, a one line, in one line, the Chaim B'derech Zeh, in the same fashion, the Shechino, uh, which already is Malchus D'Yitzira, enters into the Elam Asiya via the Kedosh HaKadoshim, which is the Holy Shrine of Asiya, literally translated, but it is referring to the Chochma Bin Adas, the brain, the nerve system of Elam Asiya. And then it, through this, it creates all the, the creations associated with Elam Asiya, which includes also Malachim, because we're talking about the spiritual Elam Asiya, we mentioned many times there's El Masiya Gashmi, El Masiya Ruchni, and there's also Malachim <clears throat> in El Masiya Ruchni. And there's also part of the Nefesh of the Yid, right? Nefesh Ruch, Neshama Chai Yechid, the Nefesh associated with El Masiya Ruach. That's why when it came to El Masiya, it said Ruchais, and Neshama is associated with El Masiya. He goes on, he says, Even though we generally mention three, but we know this, that in the very beginning of Nunalif, if you remember, the Alphabet says clearly that there's not only three Elamis, and ultimately Elamatzilis would be the fourth, the highest. It's divided to tens of thousands of different levels, and each one is called an Elam. Gamkin Elam is Prati. And on Malchus that Tzilus Mulbeshes Malchus Kol Elam Proti Yiredus Mislabeshes Bahechol Kachim Kachim Shul Chabad Shem Elam Shal Matim and Matri. When we speak about all these myriads of Elamis, each one again is a structure on its own, and therefore, in order that the Kayach, the energy of the Malchus of the previous Elam, should have an impact and to accomplish everything in that particular Elam, it also got to go through the Chabad of that particular Elam. So it's not only these four elements are structures on their own, and the rest just kind of are subdivisions, and they just follow with the energy of that particular elam or the elam which they're associated with. No, every elam is a structure on its own, and despite there is 
beginning of the Altarebbe says, in case, infinite amounts of elements. Here he says, Lord above, he's tens of thousands of levels, but each one is a structure in its own. And therefore, if there had to be accomplishment in that oilam, it ought to go through the Chabad, Chacham Binadas, of that oilam in order to have an impact of the, of, uh, of, uh, in, of, in that oilam. So just, we're just going to conclude, conclude this, uh, the last few lines over here, just to conclude the, the, the 52nd chapter. He just adds, if you note in the note, he says, This we can appreciate what the Pasuk says. Your malchus is the malchus of all elements. So we mentioned many times, it's the malchus of every elem which becomes the energy of the subsequent elem. And again, in this chapter, he says of that elem itself. But he speaks and says, malchus kalilamim. Now, even though kalilamim is also an expression of multiplicity, which would pr- pr- include the four elements primarily, so it's not a contradiction. In other words, from the Pasuk itself, we cannot yet infer the myriads of tens, the Lashon of a year, tens of thousands of Eilamas, as al begins in then Pedic Nun Aleph, Pedic Nun Aleph, I believe it is, he says there's infinite amount of Eilamas, because Malchus Chamachus Kali Eilamim could be translated in the four Eilamas, because again, in four you have mul- um, in four, four the Eilamim, which is about multiplicity, would generally be able to include or connote to these four elements, but nonetheless, al brings us over here to say that there is an indication over here that there's many, many more elements. And what does he say? The Malchus Chamachus Kalila. It's the Malchus which gives the Kayach to accomplish in that particular Eilam, and more so to carry forth the energy to the subsequent Eilam, but yet when it comes so this uh, it carry is carried forth to the subsequent ilam, it must go through the Chochm Minatas of that ilam, based on everything without have explained till now. And so the last few lines of this chapter in Meshkina Malbeshes Bechel Kachu Kachim Shakol Ilam Ilam Klali Prati, he just kind of sums this up again from the Shechina, which is invested in the Hechel Kachu Kachim, which is the Chochm Minatas of every single ilam, which he calls as the Holy Shrine of Holy of Holies. As explained in a number of times, why the Chabad is called Kedush Hakadoshim, especially when we say the Chabad is the energy of Teira, which is Teira is the first entry of the Ein Sof in its connection, its relationship to Elamis. And again, we said, why would Teira be that interface, that two dimensions of Teira, like we explained in last week's class? But we can appreciate why it's called the Chabad is called the Kedush Hakadoshim every single Elam, so the Shechina, which is invested in the Kedush Hakadoshim every single Elam. Every general element, specifically element, Nimshach Mispashim, Mena Eir Vachai, is the Chol Elam. Again, as a summary of everything he said till now, the manifestation of the light and the energy which is in every single Elam, the Abruim Shabbat, and the creations which exist in that Elam, the Shamais, the souls, the Malachim, and the angels, the Chulu, etc., whatever is, is established in that particular Elam world. Because they were all created with the ten sayings to which Hakshikot Baruch used in order to create the world. How do we know this? Because it says clearly, and then again, nine times by Yemer, Hashem said, Hashem spoke creation into being. It's a mission about Sarah Ma'amores, Nivrova Elam. The Sarah Ma'amores, this is the Dvar Hashem, and Ikim Hashem Shechina. This is the word of Hakshikot Baruch Hu, which is called Shechina. And this is where Hashem's, the, the, the potency of Hashem's energy, and, but in, and therefore it has to go into a subsequent Eilam, it has to be, has to go into the, it has to, so to say, to, to allow this Shechina energy to be manifest and to be accomplishing in the subsequent Eilam, it needs to have that interface, which is the Chochm Bin Adas of that particular Eilam. So this is when we say Asar Mamoris Nivra Eilam, how does it coincide to this, which we say that there is the, the energy called the Shechina energy, which again is the Reishis in Aschal, and the very be- the beginning of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's expression, or means towards expression, to be a creator, an, an emanator, and creator, and ultimately Yitzir Asir in the myriad of elements. He says that is Asar Mamoris. Now very briefly, we spoke about this as well in the past, and we'll conclude over here as we conclude this painting. Ma'amores, Shechina, are synonymous. In Pasach Elio, Malchus Peh, he spoke about this even last week and the week before. Speech is associated with Shechina, 
speech is associated with malchus. Why so? Malchus is the last midah. Just like by man, there is, in order to accomplish something, it usually goes through man's intellect, means to say he appreciates the idea. And then there, what kicks in is the midas, the motivation to go forward, to be driven to something. You have to be motivated to, to it. In other words, you have to be driven to it. And then you, there are the levushim, the garments which ultimately execute this concept, this idea, this emotion. For example, someone appreciates the notion of being kind, of sharing, and then when he sees somebody who's poor, or he sees somebody who's vulnerable, as an example, he sees somebody who is, who is in need, so at that point he emotes, his, his midas kick in in a way that the midas start feeling towards the other person with compassion and kindness and so on, but nonetheless the kindness and the compassion which is brewing the party's heart, the one of those balmidas, the heart of his balmidas, doesn't yet bring the bread to the Reese to this poor and vulnerable uh, human being. You have to do something to execute this which you appreciate in your mind and you emote within your heart, which that is the Mahshava di Burmaisa, known as the garments. You think about it in a structured manner. You talk about it. You literally tell the person, come in, here's a loaf of bread, here's a place you can lodge, and so on and so forth. This speech is what ultimately brings the matters inward, outward, and forwards, this which you appreciate, understand, and, 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 um, and feel. And so to Maise is the final avush of actual execution. Here, picking up the piece of bread or the money and giving it the charity or giving the poor for him something to, something for him to eat, to quench his, to quench his thirst or to, to satisfy his hunger. So Mashab di Maise are the end, this part which ultimately brings everything that goes on inside into ultimately, ultimate fruition particularly when it comes to Dibor. Dibor is also, we spoke about this in the past, but very brief, is Dibor is bringing something. It, this is the step and the stage to which a person comes from the way he's formed, so biased himself to the outside. No one knows why, what I appreciate. No one knows what I understand. No one knows what I feel. No one even knows what I think. Think, thought is a, is, is a lavush as well, because it brings structure into the manner. There's ISIS, there's letters in Mahshava, but nonetheless, you don't know, nobody knows what one thinks. It's only deeper is the first part, is the step where the person takes everything that goes on within himself and divulges it and brings it out to the outside. That's the Dibur, that's the speech, that's the involvement with another party, another idea, and so on. And this is why it's synonymous, it's synonymous with Shechina. There's a dimension of a Kodesh Baruch which is called Kutshu Brichu Kodesh, remove the way Hashem is formed himself by himself. And then the Shechina is Meshechenes, or Mislabeshes, invests, encloses itself, deals with something else, which again is synonymous with the idea of Dibur. And so to the idea of Malchus, a king rules with, with, uh, with his speech, with his edicts, with his dictates, and so on, associated with Malchus. Malchus is the Dvar Hashem. A number of places, a number of psukim, we find Malchus associated with Dibur. Because again, it's about the reign, it's about the actual function of kingship by the king. Which he's dealing already with a nation, going away from himself, the way he's for himself, by himself, exalted, removed. Especially a king, again, has that duality. On the one hand, he's an exalted person. They don't take Stam, a person, to lead, to rule, to connect to a nation. It's precisely the exalted, removed personality, introvert personality, which is Mereima. Mamelech is usually Mereima, but then when, when we want to call Mamelech is already his dealings, his connection, his descending from his Reimamos, if you will, his exaltedness and dealing with the nation, that's when he's perfectly, that's when he's called the Melech. That's when you have the term Melech. He's a Melech al Ha'am, a Melech over a nation, dealing with the specificities of the needs of the nation. So we see this how all these terminology, Shechina, Dibur, Malchus, are all synonymous with each other. It's the way they're going away from it, from the inside, the concealed and the hidden, 
dimension of the human being. And in the habla, when it comes to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the way Hashem is formed, so by Himself, getting involved, shechina, shechena, mislabeshes, talking, kaviyachu, leading, kingship, malchus, malchus chamachus kolilomim, the connection to the inferior, which is the lower worlds, etc. Have a good night.